So, I'm back. So, I'm doing that. Hey guys and girls, what's going on? Viridia here, and uh, today I am making another video in response to the one I made yesterday. You guys actually really, uh, I got some good feedback from that video. It was just a vlog video, but it was a video basically about me kind of talking about my life and talking about the things that had happened in the past three years and very, very uh, generalized. Uh, very, it was it was very well. It was very shortened down. Um, but in any case, I talked about in that video talking about my ideas and my philosophies on life and, and things like that. And I actually did a live stream <clears throat> a couple couple months ago in which I talked to a few of my uh, streamers about, you know, philosophy. And I talked to them about it. And it was, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, there was only a few people in there. But um, I want to preface this video and any videos that I make after this uh, by saying that first and foremost, I'm not putting my ideas out there to offend anyone. I'm not putting my ideas out there to belittle anybody's beliefs. Um, I'm literally just, <clears throat> I'm putting my, my views and, and my thoughts out there as first of all a way for me to have a good discussion with others. Um, for me to have a discussion where you can ask questions maybe about your own personal beliefs uh you can fill me in on how you believe because i you know i want to i want to kind of i want to create a discussion that's meaningful not that gaming isn't a meaningful discussion gaming is just it's not as important to me as these issues here because these are the issues that i want to talk about the issues that i want to bring up they affect our world they affect our life and there are quite a few YouTubers on here that I um, that I really truly enjoy that you know post their views online and, and they they're not scared to talk about it. So today I want to start off my I want to start off my philosophical oh shit <laughs> I want to start off my philosophical discussion by talking about um, my life from as long as I can remember till now and the religion aspect that was. Uh, entrusted upon me by my my kin my, my 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 family so i was born in the south i live in a small town in arkansas uh so as you know already i am uh predisposed to be a christian this is the most the, uh, i live in what is known in the united states if you're not from here my area is known in the united states as the bible belt uh, excuse me the reason that it's known as the bible belt is because people take that shit seriously here. Um, so growing up, obviously, I attended um, a Christian church. I, I attended a Methodist church. <clears throat> and for those of you that don't know, Methodism or uh, Methodist is a, a, a denomination of the Christian faith. Um, it's very cl it, it, it's closely uh, it's close to the Pentec or not Pentecostal, but the Presbyterian denomination. Um, and if you don't know what a denomination is, if you want to know the differences, please, by all means, look them up. I may make a video someday discussing the denominations of the Christian faith um, and how they differ from each other. A denomination that you would all maybe be familiar with that is quite different from Christianity are Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. Those are two separate denominations of the Christian faith that are so far-fetched that they they almost tend they, they almost lend to the uh, the, the cult. Uh, aspect of, of of religion, and they almost deviate from the denomination uh, moniker uh, at all because they're almost different religions. Um, they're based around the same. Anyway, we'll, we'll get on that later. Um, <laughs> I grew up as a Methodist. I grew up as a Christian, and uh, my my parents did what they thought was best for a child. They they you know took them to Sunday school and church and things like that. And growing up, I was not. I wasn't into church. It wasn't interesting as mo as, as it isn't to most children. Uh, I know if I know I know children that actually they eat it up. They enjoy you know church. They enjoy Sunday school. They enjoy learning about God and things like that. And just like most children, I was I was brought into the faith believing that uh, God Almighty was the creator of the universe. 
I was taught that at a young age, and I just accepted that as truth. And because I accepted that as truth, um, I mean, I, I mean, because I was taught that at such a young age, I was trusting that that was the answer. Um, my my family, uh, you know, consists of a very smart group of people. My grandfather was a lab tech for you know forty years. Um, my uncle is a he was the head engineer at Samsung at one time. My my aunt. She has a PhD in mathematics. I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm, I'm from a very, very intelligent family. Um, so these people believing, you know, me, me hearing of their intelligence, me hearing of their, uh, you know, all of the accomplishments that they had had, had, had done, I, I, I was more inclined to believe them. It wasn't just a, uh, a blind faith. It was like, these people know what they're talking about. What? Then they have to go to? I, maybe. I don't know. I've never played that game. But I'm making a video right now. Go have a seat and play, okay? See? Then. That's why it's impossible to make videos. But, in any case, um, I was inclined to believe that this was true. And I did. I did believe that, you know, my, in, during my childhood. As a matter of fact, I was quick to uh, discuss religion with people. I, I began <laughs> discussing religion at school. And it wasn't until I was, I think in middle school, fifth or sixth grade, that um, I actually had my first Christian debate with a, with a boy. I was Methodist, and I was brought up to believe that if you were a Christian, if you believed in God, you would go to heaven. And this boy was pretty sure I was wrong. He was like, no, if you're not a Baptist... You go to hell. And I'm like, whoa, 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 we believe in the same God. Yeah, but you don't believe in him the way I do. So your ass is burning in hell. And as a child, I was brought up that hell was a very bad place to go. It was not, it was not, um, it wasn't just drawing the short end of the stick and going, ah, damn it, I, I'm going to hell. No, well, you know, whatever. No, it was, it was bad. Um, I've always had an acute imagination, therefore I conjured up pictures and had horrible dreams of a place where people's flesh melted off and, and, you know, Satan's demons performed sodomy on me for, you know, hours and hours and hours until I was destroyed, and then they would just recreate that. I know I'm, I shouldn't be talking about it. This is stuff that I was taught as a kid, so, you know, if he wants, if he's going to hear about this. There's a four-year-old while I'm talking about demons performing sodomy, but still, you know, this is the kind of crap that I was brought up to believe. Um, you know, they would, they would open new orifices on my body to, you know, to screw. That's, that's hell. That is this horrible place. So when, when I, when I hear in church, this horrible, horrible place you will go for not believing in God, my mind is like, okay, well, I'm not going to censor the horrid nature of hell. I'm going to create what I believe is like the worst possible thing. So for some little scumbag piece of shit to come to school and tell me I'm going to burn there because I'm not a Baptist, I was pissed. And, um... It led to me, you know, thinking very violently about him. I was, you know, I thought about, I want to beat this, I want to beat the hell out of him. Because he's basically telling me that my family's going to burn. And it was these these initial, you know, thoughts that led to my understanding of the violence that, that isn't, you know, that's brought on by, by Christianity. It was very early on that I thought, this man believes in the same God that I do, but I still want to hurt him. Because he doesn't believe in him the exact way I do. Because he has condemned my family to hell, when in reality, he's just stupid. And uh, <laughs> he didn't know what he was talking about. And just like I didn't know what I was talking about. And this continued on. I, I, I continued to go to church. I actually worked in the... Uh, I worked for the youth program for a while at my church. And my faith was never uh, excellent. It was never great. I, it was more like I was just along for the ride. I didn't... Uh, I didn't do anything out of the ordinary for my church. I didn't, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I did work in the youth program, but I didn't go as far as to pray over people or act like I was seeing visions or speaking in tongues. The truth is, is that in my, you know, 20 years of being a Christian, I never once experienced God. And I tried. I wasn't half-assing my attempt to seek spiritual enlightenment. No, I was actually, you know, I was legitimately trying 
for those of you that don't know, which is the majority of you, um, I have extreme MDD, which is major depression disorder. Um, I have had it since I was a kid. So medication and, and things like that have never really helped me. Um, so I was always told, well, you're not, you know, you got to pray to God. God's got to help you through this. What'd you say, lady? Come here. Let's go over here and see you. What'd you say? All right. Anyway, so I was told, you know, you need to pray more. You need to, you know, seek spiritual enlightenment. And if you're not doing that properly, then you're not going to get help. So I felt like a failure. I was like, shit, you know. I'm not, I am not experiencing uh, God as I should be. And that is probably my fault. Um, needless to say, I began a very strict regiment of praying. I prayed every night, every day. Anytime I, I, I mean, it was just, it, I had to. I, I had to get this down. And it was so bad. My depression was so uh, problematic for me. That it lent itself to me doing absolutely anything I could uh, to rectify it. So I did. I did it for three years straight. I prayed every night, very silently in my room. And I didn't pray, uh, I didn't what, what they call foxhole pray. I didn't pray for m minor things. I more prayed altruistically and, you know, codependently. Please help others, you know. And in doing so, you know, perhaps you could... Uh, Perhaps you could lend my mind some ease, therefore I could help other people. And it never came. Um, it wasn't long before I realized that, just like meditation, I needed to trick myself into thinking that my prayers were being answered. I needed to look, just like everyone else was, I needed to look at every good situation as a, a an answer to a prayer that I had had. Rather than looking at the person as a good person, I needed to look at the prayer as a good prayer and, and an answer prayer. I needed to, so, so, you know, if Sam comes up to me and says, you know, Daddy, you look down today, let me give you a hug. Instead of recognizing Sam as the, you know, as, as being a good person and noticing something and being observant, I need to look at him and say, God has entered my life through my little boy. It wasn't Sam, it was God who gave Sam this insight. And once I became aware of that and realized that that was what I needed to do, I'm not fucking stupid. So I, I, I mean, it's obvious when I look around that that's what's happening. Um, I decided that wasn't going to happen. Let him through, you jerk. Okay, I'm talking. I'm on. Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. So anyway, I noticed that that that's what was happening. I noticed like so, you know, you go to church, and Okay, it's like, I need money. And then all of a sudden, oh, you know, a church member gives you some money. And, oh, my God, thank God. You know, no, it wasn't God. It was some person who had more money than you, heard that you needed help. They felt that God told them to give them money. You felt that God told them to give them money, or give you money, rather. Therefore, God did it. No. In reality, you've got a fellowship of people who believe in the same thing. Therefore, they're going to fork over the money. They're going to... Uh, feel in, in inclined to do things in the name of their God, in the name of good, in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what happened. So I couldn't delusion, disillusion myself enough to, to do that. I couldn't say, I couldn't, I couldn't look at somebody who did a good deed and say, that wasn't them. That was God. Because the truth is, is that had they done something bad, I wouldn't have equally said that wasn't them. That was Satan. I would have blamed them and rightfully slow, right? I mean, I... You take responsibility for your errors. And the thing was is that most of the people that I knew that were devout Christians, they did the same thing to myself. They would condemn me if I did bad things, which I did a lot of as a kid. But then they would praise God for all of my uh, achievements, all of my talents, all of my accomplishments in life. It was God that allowed me to do that. It was never God that allowed me to, you know, fuck up. It was always God that allowed me to, to do good. And that was the idea that really opened my eyes to religion. And it made me realize this is this is deplorable. So it was then that I picked up the Bible for the first time and started to read it. And that was when I realized that most Christians don't read the Bible. The majority of them don't. 
Just because you pick out certain passages or maybe you read a part of a book of the Bible does not mean that you've read the Bible. Reading the Bible is... It, it, it's... It's taking the time to read it. Not only just read it. I mean, even a lot of people that have read the whole Bible haven't read the Bible. Uh, they're not. They're not reading it. They're not listening. They're they're very biased as to the words that are in there. They're going to dissect them and turn them into a good thing. And I can do that to most things. You know, I could take I could take Hitler's reign. I'm sure and, and turn it into. Uh, I, I could find some way to justify it if I thought really long and hard about it. But no matter how much I tried to justify it, it would still sound like absolutely ignorant to kill people like that. What is going on? Want some more? Bruises on your ass here already? <laughs> oh God, I say, victory will be mine this time. <laughs> One hit. So yeah, I could, I mean, I would look like a complete total moron had I, you know, if I tried to justify something like that. But when it comes to religion, trying to justify the deaths of so many people is God's will. Inherently, when God does something, it becomes unevil, therefore we have to look at it as a good thing. So, when I, when, when I hear that crap, I begin to put it, I, I begin to plug it into the... Uh, the epicenter of my looks on religion. So, as a Christian, I hear that all the time. Why did, I, I ask, why did God, why did God kill so many people with the flood? He's omnipotent and omniscient. We're gonna get that out of the way first. We're gonna we're gonna plug that in. But, um, you know, God God killed everybody on the face of the earth, save a family who created an ark and somehow stored. We'll get onto that later. But. He killed everybody but them because of their evil nature. But he's omniscient. Therefore, not only did he know they would become evil and shouldn't have got mad in the first place, because that's obviously ignorance if you're getting mad over something that you know is coming well ahead of time. And secondly, you knew that they were going to become even more evil some 4,000 years later. It would be even worse. So you knew that flooding the world wasn't going to fix shit. Why would you do that? Oh, don't question God, because when he kills somebody, it becomes good. It becomes righteous, because he did it. And he's the one who basically makes that shit up. So I say, okay, so did God, was God responsible for the deaths of all of the Jews in the Holocaust? No. Okay, well, so he didn't have a hand in any of that shit. No. Did he have a hand in saving them? Of course. Okay. So he picks and chooses what he does and doesn't do. Well, he gives free will to people. Shit, that's confusing as fuck, man. I mean, really? I'm a pretty smart guy, but I am confused. Like, legitimately. So I look at some of the people, and I'm not calling Christians in general, you know, stupid. I think that there's hope there that they find. But I look at Christianity in general, and I say, okay, I know that I'm more intelligent than a lot of these people that I'm talking to presently. And they get it. How can they get it and I don't? Am I not allocating that amount of intelligence to the Bible, therefore I just don't understand it? Is that it? Or, are they really not understanding it? And they're just talking out their asshole. So, that's where I lend to. The thing is, is that I observe the world around me and I observe the way things are. I take in all arguments and I hear so many people talk and I listen. I listen very closely. I'm not one to hear somebody go praise Jesus and then just jump on I'm like fuck you you shithead um, because I was that person at one point um, and I would have been it would have been very upsetting had somebody done that to me when I thought I was doing the right thing however I don't appreciate when you know Christian people um, when Christian people try and forsake others happiness for the sake of their Bible that's bullshit um, there are plenty of things in that holy book that you yourself do not follow. And because of that, you're going to burn in hell. Do you understand me? <laughs> if you are a Christian and you are condemning homosexuals, saying they're going to burn in hell, you are just as equally going to burn in hell because of the things that you do that the Bible condemns. If you have any questions about that, I'll point it out to you. But I implore you to look that up for yourself um, before challenging me there. Um, because it's common knowledge. 
Um, if you were the type of person that lived your life exactly by the Bible, your life would be hell. Your life would suck balls. Okay? I implore anyone to... Which, the Bible itself is a list of rules, but I imply you to take just a segment of those rules and apply it to your life for a month and see how shitty your life is. See how many times you sin. Because you will. You will sin a lot. You better pray that, like, you know that your death's coming so that you can just sit there and completely, you know, repent for hours and hours and hours. If you accept God into your heart, you'll go to heaven. Uh, okay. Uh, what if you kill a guy but you still have God in your heart? Do you go to heaven? No. Why? Well, because you sinned. Well, you just sinned. You just ate a damn... You ate a ham sandwich! You know, it's like... You're eating a ham sandwich and telling me I'm going to burn in hell. That's in the Bible. You can't do that. <laughs> Sam's cracking up. Anyway, these things came into my mind over the past seven, eight years. And I began to really delve into what I was doing with my life. And I decided, you know, if I'm going to live my life, I want to know what's going to happen. And as I said in the beginning, this video is not intended to hurt anyone's feelings. Uh, it is literally just there to make discussion. If you are offended by this video um, to the point to where you're, you know, furiously typing a comment or you're hitting that dislike button and whatnot, you need to leave. Get the fuck out of here because you are not my audience. The audience that I'm looking for is a well, uh, well-intentioned group of people who understand that everybody has a different view on the world. And I simply want to tell, tell you mine. And I definitely want to hear yours. To the point that I want to not just hear it. I want to discuss it. I want to make videos based on your opinion. So if you'd like to send me a message. Or if you'd like to make a video response. Or if you'd like to um, you know, bring up a debate. Maybe even have a Skype debate or something like that. Or a discussion. Maybe you're not wanting to debate. But maybe you're wanting to discuss. And let me know. I would love to do that. Maybe at some point. But this is just the beginning of uh, kind of a, a backstory into my religious um, upbringing and how I was turned off of religion completely. And uh, we'll get into more detail as to why I think religion is a harmful experience, um, if not to my philosophies on the hum on humanity and why why religion is dooming us to fail. Literally, I'm not being over dramatic. I'm being honest. Uh, why these religious um, farces are going to be the inevitable end of humanity if we don't, you know, take our head out of our ass and start seeing the world for what it is. We as humans are conditioned to look at this beautiful world. I mean, look at this. This is this was made beautiful by somebody who saw the world beautiful. This game I'm talking about, and because they saw the world in such a beautiful way they made the game to reflect that. We see the world as beautiful and we credit God for making it this way. When in reality, what we're seeing, what makes this beautiful, what makes the sky beautiful is science, elements, the atmosphere, the green in the trees. That is not a God-given trait. That is something that was evolved over time. We can see the, the timeline. We can see how that happened. We've got very strict evidence as to how that happened. No, we cannot go into a time machine and prove that that is true. Neither can you, though. Um, you cannot show me the face of God. You cannot show me the face of Jesus. You cannot show me, other than their Bible, that the miracles that were performed are, in fact, mir miraculous. As a matter of fact, you can't tell me that I've experienced a miracle. Miracles are, are my own thing to perceive. I can perceive... I can look at Sam as a miracle. I can look at him. And I can look over at him. Come here. I can, I can see his face. And I can see how somebody would be like, that is a miracle. Because to me, as a father, I am inclined to believe... Okay, come here. I want, I want you to... Come here for a minute. As a father, I'm inclined to look at him and see myself in him, which I do. And understand that this is my blood. This is my genetic makeup. Half of this thing is me. So, I want to preserve his life. I am inclined to love him. Mm, like I do. If this was someone else's kid, altruistically, I would, I would care for him because I wouldn't want to see him get hurt. But I wouldn't love him like I do Sam, right? 
But for somebody to tell me that I am a piece of trash because I don't see him as a gift from God, that is very offensive. I don't see him as a gift of God. I see him as a gift of the universe, a gift of the fortune, if you want to call it that, that I was born human and I, that I was born in a time that was uh, that, that allots him to be healthy and to be yeah a gamer and to um, have all the privileges and benefits that I do. I'm very fortunate for that. I'm fortunate that we weren't born in the medieval times because he would probably be covered in dirt and only have like 15 more years to live right so anyway that's my view uh that's my not my view that is a portion of my view in my religious history as a child i'm very curious to hear your religious history i'm very curious to hear your religious views like i said i am not here to judge anyone i am not here to upset anyone and if by chance your your views are different than mine i would love to hear that i would love to discuss them not belittle you, but I would love to discuss them and, and, and hear what you have to say. And maybe through uh, discussion and, and things like that, maybe we can come to an agreement of some kind. Maybe we can find a medium, a happy medium. And until then, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for viewing. I want to thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your kind words on my last video. Peace out. Later. Say bye. Say bye. Bye.